Hello everybody and welcome to another Arkham Horror List video. It's Thursday, that means it's another list. The sun rises and sets and another list on Thursday. Those are the rules of the universe. Let's dive in. We're talking about our top five favorite three experience cost cards, so level three experience cards. Uh, why don't we dive right in with Bryn? What is your number five? I've got custom ammunition which I know a lot of you are probably looking at, and you're like, three money and three experience for two extra bullets? That's not very good. And you're right, you're right, it's not. It's really not. But that's just extra attacks. That's not really what this card does. What this card does is make it so that attacks performed by attached <laughs> by attached asset deal plus one damage to monster enemies. That's really what this card does. Mm -hmm. It turns out, that the majority of enemies who have four or more health are monster enemies. Uh, and this just makes your gun deal extra damage to them. Mm -hmm. uh, I have only played with it one time, and I was playing a Act of Desperation Mark Harrigan deck, Sick. where I would play, uh, I would play the, uh, the blue 45 Thompson, and I would stick this on it, and then... Uh, well prepared, or not well prepared? Uh, well maintained. Well maintained. Well maintained. And then I would like I would shoot it till it was out of bullets, gain a giant pile of money, and then throw it at something and gain another big pile of money, and then just play all my asset stuff back out. Seems sick. Seems fun. <laughs> it was pretty neat. But what I discovered was that custom ammunition's plus one damage to monster enemies is like probably about four or five times more relevant than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was pretty sure that part was the flavor text, but it turns out that the extra bullets is the flavor text. Um, I'm looking forward to the moment where Bryn's playing with us with this extra ammunition, and he's like sh uh, shooting like the final version of Alejandro, and he's like, technically, this guy, we call him a monster, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure Alejandro's oh, fleshy meat body takes sufficient damage from bullets, though. Yeah, but... He is just made of meat. Yeah. Aren't we all? Uh, my but number five... Uh, sorry. My number five is Dream Diary, Dreams of a Child. Uh, I like all the Dream Diaries. Uh, Skill-based decks are fun, and having a skill that commits for four wild symbols is just always feels really great. Um... And uh, this is the one that I found. This one and the Four Shroud are the ones that are the easiest to, like, get going. Um, and especially with, I mean, the eight-card one is, like, super easy to get going. Um, but it just feels fun to have a card each turn that you can then commit into, um, into tests. Uh, that was also some fun putting it under... I, I tried it out when I was playing my Amanda Sharp deck, putting it under Amanda, and, like, that was also pretty fun. <laughs> that was a, a wild time. Um, yeah, I just think it's a... Even though I still... Like, I know in my heart of hearts that yellow from the beginning of the game, very early on, like, when Min was in, it started to really go into, like, a skill-based deck, so I have to get over that bias I have where I'm like, yellow's good at everything! They shouldn't get skills! Um, but it is a good skill class, and uh, it's... Uh, I mean, I love Min, and I like the yellow skills, so it makes sense that Dream Diary, uh, I love the cards. Travis, what's your number five? Speaking of yellow being good at everything, <laughs> this was like my first taste of true power playing this game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, cards, like, it's definitely not as good as it used to be, but it's still pretty bonkers. Mm-hmm. Like having five cards in your hand, not have first of all, not having to draw it's permanent or play it, it's just there. Um, having to have five cards in your hand, no problem. I like doing that anyway. And then you have to spend resources to get plus two brain or plus two book. That's so good. And if you you just spend all your resources on this, and then you can't even play the cards in your hand. It's like self fulfilling. Uh, yeah, no, this is one of, like I said, it's one of my first tastes of, like, real power in this game, and one of the things that made me really start gravitating towards playing Seekers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's just, it's so good. 
It's so it, good. It's kind of, it was kind of bonker, bonkers back then, wasn't it? <laughs> it was wild. Still, like, pretty good, yeah, man. It still is. Yeah. <laughs> I have it, actually, for that Mandy deck for Forgotten Age. I have a higher education. That was my last purchase before we stopped playing, so... I'm excited to live that life again. All right, Bryn, what is your number four? I've got eidetic memory. Uh, so, you know, fair is fair, cards on the table. I've pretty much never played with this card. <laughs> uh, really incredible. What I like about this card is oh, the way that shit. it makes me think about things. <laughs> like, when, as soon as as soon as this card came out, start paying attention to the subtypes of every every event because it had never mattered before the, su the subtypes were just like ha ah, yeah it's just there but this made them count honestly you're 100 percent right because it was eidetic memory it was that uh survivor event true survivor whatever it's called that cares about innate yeah, cards yeah it, you are and now it's practiced like <laughs> yeah yeah, kind of like the uh, the Carcosa cycle made us care about them. Yeah, yeah. It just uh, it was not something that I'd thought about before. But after after that, like every every time someone would play something, I'd be like, "Hang on, is that an insight? I can copy that. With, I can copy that with eidetic memory. Like I'm not going to, yeah. but I could." Yep. Uh, that being said, I think this card is fairly fairly strong. Like it's in, it's incredibly flexible if you're playing a pile inside events and only gets better if your teammates have some yeah definitely because you can just pick the best one for the situation I mean, the flexibility is like it's what you're paying for yeah like the only way to get like actual value would be copy an event that costs more than like three experience presumably um but uh it depends it depends what you're, that, how many what you're doing yeah, there's not too many other. There's not too many things you can get like strict value from. No, no. And the value, it's the ability the value to, like pick. Yeah. The value is like it's extra copies of your other cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you don't like. Yeah, the, the the strength of it is that you don't have to pick which card it is until you need it to be that card. As long as you've done it before. Yeah, as long as as long as somebody has done it before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, my number four is Granny Orn, this tough old bird. You get plus one brain and plus one book, and she's like half of a lucky. Uh, she got a lot better for me when I tried to, like, when I activated the level zero one, and then Bryn's like, oh, no, you, you still fail. <laughs> you you, <technically laughs> you fail by zero. And I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> um, so the, like, obviously level zero Granny Orange, she has her place. Like, she has, like, what her function is. And, like, especially, like, the having it, the ability to fail by, like, one more can be nice. But, like, it's not why I'm playing the game. I'm not playing the game to goddamn fail by zero. What the heck? <laughs> um, so uh, the plus one skill value that allow you to pass the test, half a lucky, is super sweet. Um, for reference, everyone watching at home, level three Lucky is not on this list. I've actually not played with it yet because I haven't played a freaking red character since it came out. Um, but super good, Justin. I, I believe it. It's uh, so good. Uh, yeah, Granny Orn, she's great. She's fun. That's my number four. Travis, what about you? Uh, fine. Um, yeah, this is like also one of the first cards that made us care about um, subtypes, though it came out later in the cycle. I have had many good times playing Six the Plan. Um, even though occasionally it makes the game a little bit boring and repetitive, it is still a very good feeling to be just like, you're just here. You know, you've got your plan and you're doing it. You know? It's a very strong card. And... I don't know, we've talked about this card a lot, and I don't think that I have too much else to say about it. Yeah, it's just good. <laughs> Just good. All right. Just good. Bryn, what is your number three? <laughs> I've got the Tennessee Sour Mash Red. Uh, so the difference between this and the base level one is that you get one extra supply and it costs one less money to play. Uh, other than that, you still get the Exhausted to get plus two brain and remove a supply to get plus two brain during a skill test on a treachery card. And as an action, you can discard it to fight 
and uh, you know smash it on somebody's face and get plus three punch for the attack. And if you succeed and it's not an elite en enemy, you just you know they're too busy picking glass out of their hair to chase you. Man, I love yeah. this these three cards in this succession. I don't know why, but I just love the heck out of this page. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also love the flavor difference between like this, every every version of these uh, like they have a multi-class base card and they upgrade into one each for the the art has subtle differences to it uh, this one the with the red one the whiskey has the bottle has more whiskey in it uh, and the green one they have, there's a there's a shot glass so like maybe you're drinking better whiskey maybe you know you're not just pulling it from the bottle uh, who knows? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I nah, think... That's uh, what you're smashing him with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it probably yeah. actually is. that It's like fancier whiskey. Yeah. It, yeah. And well, that's that, why that, you get that plus would, three instead of plus two. Yeah. Yeah, that would, that would, seem, that would seem to suit it, right? Like, Goes because out, you okay. get fancier, fancier whiskey. But uh, anyway, pretty much any time that I'm paying two money for three copies of Guts. All right. right? I can live with that. I don't even need extra upside. Yeah. Still just pretty good. That's uh, all I got to say about that. Uh, my number three is Crystalline Elder Sign. Uh, this uh, gives you plus one to all your stats, which if you know anything about Justin, he <laughs> loves plus one to all of his stats. He hates failing by zero, and he loves plus one to all his stats. Uh, ceiling the plus one's fun, too, because, like, your opponent, eh, not your opponents, once again, this is a co-op game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the second time. Uh, your teammates, uh, they don't get the plus one anymore, but you now essentially, like, you do permanently while it's sealed on that card. I wouldn't seal the Elder Sign except for, like, in that deck tech that we've done that hasn't been released yet by the time that this video's been out. Um, but I'm loving, I, I lo I'm loving Crystalline Elder Sign. I think it'd be fun to, uh, I've played it, and I'm going to keep playing it, and... I just like plus one to all my stats. It's a good time. Just Justin, have yeah. you have you ever considered playing Dark Horse Lola with Dark Horse and Crystalline Elder Sign, and then the rest of your cards are yellow, blue, and green? Ooh, <laughs> I might have to try that out, Brent. I might have to. Just, I might have just, to go back into the. Fives. I might have to go back into the Lola mines and see if there's anything salvageable. <laughs> I do also like the casual reference to a video that. They couldn't have possibly watched yet, but it's also a different series. Yes, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're working on, like, so many different, like, levels of reality on this channel at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, time, time works weird in YouTube. It does. It works very strange. Yeah, because we, we filmed that last Wednesday. Uh, it's July 7th for everyone who's wondering what day it is. And that video is probably not going to even come out till like, August. So, uh... Travis, what's your number three? This is the green tendency, Sour Mash. Uh, I like how this is one of the cards that, the few cards that offsets green's garbage brain powers and makes them playable to me. And I like how it also has a good use and deals extra damage when you hit people with it. I also like yep. how it's fast. Uh, yeah, no, like this, apparently this card is like incredibly well designed. Oh yeah. This Tennessee Star Mash like as a whole. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nailed it. Yeah. And it's like such top down design too, right? Where it's like what does whiskey do? Or like whatever. I don't yeah. drink alcohol. I don't know what actually this is. <laughs> it is, it is. Fuzzy yeah. and then makes yeah. you not talk. Good. Yeah. Uh <laughs> no, it's uh I've actually been playing this card in. I've been playing a green character in one of my. Well, I've been playing with my family, which is. I wouldn't say disaster, but like. It's happening. I've been, this card has single handedly got me out of uh, not playing the game. Oh, yeah. Because I have a low brain score because we're playing the circle and done. Ooh. <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> I'm playing thin, so. Good card. Yeah. Yeah. No, I do, I do love the way that the two of these are designed, where. Like the red one, it's crappier whiskey because it's whatever you can get. And then, you know, you fight action, you're probably just like smashing the bottle on them to try to get away. Mm -hmm. And the rogue one, it's better whiskey. So you get a better brain score, but also 
when it comes time to fight someone with them with it you're glassing them you're not yeah you're like yeah, you're trying to kill them you, like, that's dead is better yeah all right let's go to our number two Bryn why don't you start us off with your number two I got Joey the rat vigil he's looking out for number one right uh, <laughs> so lightning bolt you get to you get to spend a resource and put an item asset from your hand into play paying its cost or as a lightning bolt you can discard an, an item asset from play to gain two resources I you probably haven't well you probably have seen this by now but I'm super excited to play this guy with Bob Jenkin mm -hmm. uh, and just like cycle through garbage items oh let's go <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, there's the two con men in the back of their Winnebago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think that I think that's a, that's got potential for a pretty solid movie, and uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, I'd watch the hell out of that. That's like yeah. planes, trains, and automobiles, but like the yeah. con man, it's great. Uh, but this this guy's just kind of fun. Uh, to say nothing of the fact that he has two two resources for a three two soak, which is kind of ahead of curve. Um, Unless you're yellow, but yellow gets to cheat at everything, so whatever. But there's there's like a lot of neat things you can do with this guy. You're you're playing guns and your gun's empty. Sell your gun, sell your empty gun to Joey the Rat Vigil because it's easier than reloading. Everyone knows that. Uh, and then buy a new gun from him. Yep. But one with bullets in it this time, please. Uh, for reference, Bryn, I added the planes, trains, and automobiles uh, into the <laughs> deck building ideas for when that gets released, just for future reference. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that'll be good. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Uh, my number two is Old Book of Lore, level three, obviously, because that's what this list is. Uh, I like Old Book of Lore. Um, like honestly, like Old Book of Lore for me, it's less like the. Most of the time, I use it as like a source to just continually search my deck, and you know, like activate my researches when I am playing it. Uh, however, like, the card's still just fantastic. You just draw a card every turn with it. That's incredible. And uh, Bryn told me, hey, Justin, you should try out the upgraded version sometime. And I was like, sure, I'll do that. And, yeah, it's just great. Like, just the additional, um, just, like, being able to play a card out of that, that's just, just a lot of nice value there. Uh, I don't have much more to say, so that's all I have for Old Book of Lore. Travis. Yeah. What's your number two? Dream Diary. Um, I, I really like them all. This one is specifically Dreams of a Child, though. The upgrade ones, I mean, like, I'm not going to tell you what they do, because Justin already did. Um, I just really, I, I like the untranslated, translated thing, and well, this one I think is, like, a little bit easy to do for how good it is. Um, it also just kind of goes into every deck. There's one for every situation. Um... Getting big numbers to your skill test is really nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's extra nice when you... Uh, it helps enable, like, level 2 deductions and stuff like that. Just... It's just a really good card. Heck yeah. Use it to run away from an enemy. Use it to pass a brain test in the mythos phase. Use it to pass a difficult investigation check. Use it to punch something, I guess. Just do whatever you want with it. Yeah. It's your dream diary, baby. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Bryn! Let's round out with the number ones. What is your number one? I've got the Lupara. So this is a... It's a gun that... Playing it does not provoke attacks of opportunity, and it does extra damage and gives you extra punch if the fight action is activated the turn that it comes into play. And considering that it only has two ammo, you probably are playing it on the turn you want to use it. It also... It, like, it only takes up one hand slot, um, one of our one of our friends, uh, he the first time we played the game, he decided that he hated it, which was fair because he just got gorped on turn three, and there was really kind of not anything we could have done about it. Uh, yeah, he, he drew he drew the red token twice in a row, and when we finally talked him into trying the game again because there were more cards and that was less likely to happen, uh, the deck he was playing had sleight of hand and Lupara in it. Uh, <laughs> It's just one, uh, one, one turn where he had, uh, I, for, I forget what the enemies were exactly, but there were two larger enemies and he had no weapons left in play because the game had made him discard his machete. And we were like, okay, so we'll come over there and engage those guys so that, uh, you know, you can play, you can play a new weapon and you can, you, you can get 
And he's like, no, don't worry about it. Because there's no way they would have thought that I had a shotgun in my bloomers. He just <laughs> you know, sleight of hand at a, a Lupara, and that was so... Uh, I still... Uh, that was years ago. I still remember that. That was quite a while. That was a good, was good time. Yeah. <laughs> Sick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my number one is Blood Pact. I've liked this card ever since I first laid eyes on it. And uh, I have very fond but horrible memories of me trying it for my first time as a solo Jim Culver deck. <laughs> oh, baby. It did not go well, I'll tell you that much. But uh, I don't think that's the fault of Blood Pact. That was the fault of Jim Culver and uh, a limited collection of cards. Uh, but Blood Pact still just, like, brings the noise. Like, we recently did that... Um, the Forgotten Age draft, and I had Blood Pact in my deck, and like it's just it just does it, it's just like it's, it it does its job and it's flavorful, it's cool, like all the other like permanent cards are just like pretty standard, right? Pay resources, get a bonus. This one you're already like, oh, add a doom, that's already like immediately your brain's like that's crazy, and you get plus three, wow, that's so much, and especially like two relevant stats for. I mean, the fist isn't like crazy relevant at like first glance but then you think about it like jim culver can actually use this like and take advantage of it like diana stanley can take advantage of that three fist as well and i think it's just a very wonderfully designed card and i really like it travis why don't you round us oh sorry so it is a good card mm -hmm. this is diamond blast level three this card, uh, level 1 Dynamite Blast was always, like, cool, but not very good. And then level 2 Dynamite Blast was, like, actually playable. And now we got this, which is just, like, actually a great card. Uh, it costs 4 resources to play. Commits for 2 Brain or 2 Punch, which are, like, fantastic stats to commit for. 4, four symbols on the side of a card. It's just actually kind of nuts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's a tactic. It's fast, and you can play it during any Lightning Bolt window. So, like... There's a lot of times you can play this during the Mythos phase, during other people's turns. Um, during the enemy you know. phase, after hunter enemies have moved. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then you choose either your location or connecting location, and you just deal three damage to everything there. Enemies and friendlies. But like, <laughs> oh, you mean, so you much mean enemies and enemies? Damage. Right, enemies and opponents? Yeah, enemies yeah. and enemies. Uh, like... Four money for three Tesla's damage at like kind of super fast speed. Mm -hmm. It's that's nuts. Yeah. And it feels so good when it happens. Everyone's like, how are we gonna deal with these enemies? And you're like, they're just dead. Yeah. There's just they just But also no please more. take three damage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The rules could, the and they're like, how could you do this? Oh, they would have done more than three to you if they'd been alive. And they're like, good point, you win, you win. Fine. Sick. Yeah, but then they spend the rest of the playthrough living in fear of you. Which is what Travis really wants. <laughs> you're playing the Garia and then you're like they're like, God, there's an enemy here, can you come deal with it? And you're like, Yes. And then their brains are like, Oh no. Yeah. Oh well, <laughs> he and they're like, he wouldn't use dynamite on one enemy. It's fine. It's fine. Right? It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, those were our five favorite three experience cost cards. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys in the future for another list video or more Arkham Horror content. Please leave a comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't. And you can also, down in the description, there is joining our Discord to come join the conversation. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.